This is iFanboy Pick of the Week 909, brought to you by iFanboy listeners just like you, and we're back! Hello, my name is Connor Kilpatrick, and this is my co-host, Josh Flanagan. I'm here. I'm really here. And welcome back to our Fanboy Pick of the Week. This is episode 909. Happy New Year, everyone. It's our 19th year of doing this show and our 24th year of iFanboy. 24 years of iFanboy total. Yikes, Josh. They just, they hear this every week. It's just the numbers <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't slightly higher. Lot. I know. It's funny because I, I sometimes... I sometimes in my head still think of the show as a relatively new thing we do. And so when I wrote it down, I was like, 19 years of the show and 24 years of a fanboy. That can't be right. I was like, nope, you know what right. got me was uh, on the Patreon, or I'm sorry, on the Discord, someone asked, uh, almost offensively, is this uh, Reign of Fire thing that you like, is that just a bit or do you really like it? Which, I mean, in what era, where have we not seen anything but 100% sincere about Reign of Fire being... A kind of masterpiece. Anyway, the point was, it came out 21 years ago. And I was like, I remember that afternoon, though. <laughs> <laughs> like, me and Nick and Tom went to Encino. <laughs> I mean, like, I can picture my... We parked behind the thing, walked past the gap, you know. Oh, I remember going, to, too. Yeah. It's weird. Yes, it is. I just don't think it was 21 years ago. I think it was probably five years ago. No. Everything after 2003 is when it all becomes like, 2003 is the inflection point for me. Like, everything after that is, just happened. <laughs> so, so anyway, this is our 19th year doing the show. Welcome. Uh, well, uh, uh, well, where are we? Okay, every week one of us picks the books they like the best. We're all we're always rusty coming back, even though it's only been like two weeks off, three weeks off, and we've been doing this for 19 years, and yet still, it happens. Speak every for yourself, one of us kid. Picks, the book they like the best from their stack of comics called it the pick of the week and we'll talk about that book other books in the week maybe the patron pick maybe the solicitor mail maybe maybe all kinds of fun things spoiler warning this is a review show josh you had the pick the first pick of 2024 and apparently before we're starting we need to run down uh how are you doing josh i'm uh, i'm much better I know that uh if if you listen to those last few shows of last year you might thought might have thought uh, is he dying and I might have agreed with you for a bit. Uh, we were I was both bad. in rough shape. I, after I had been sick and thought I got better, then I got RSV. Like it was just, it was horrible. Uh, it, but but now I, I'm starting to finally feel like myself. Uh, and it, it's uh, thank you. Don't you sound for, like you're dying, which is nice. I no. I went through. I had a nine week sinus infection and then a really bad winter cold right at the end. So the last like nine shows i was sick for last year right. uh i was I, miserable i was sick for two and a half months straight uh it really took a mental toll on me as well sure just being that sick for that long during the during my birthday during the holidays like it was like it just, it just wiped out the last quarter of the year is like my busy quarter and just wiped yeah. it out and yeah. uh i finally started feeling better like right before christmas <laughs> and so <laughs> um i'm much better mentally i'm in a good place that's nice. Let's talk about some comics. I, I bought equipment. I have a mute button now that I didn't have before. Oh, I was in. A, I'm sorry. I was in a good place until I, I had to read some comics on on the Kindle app uh, over the. Oh, can over we the not? Break. Can we just <laughs> accepted it? Because it wasn't I don't even wanna... me. Just I. I. My wife. There was one night where she was like, "I want to read some comics." So I get over the iPad and she's she, after about five minutes. I hear, "How do you read on this?" It's fine. It's miserable. It's like it's not great. There's no other option. I don't, this this horse is dead. It's miserable. You're flogging it. It's Can not we, dead. It's just started. It's only been like three weeks since this has it been. It doesn't matter. There's no other option. It's the biggest media company in the world. Nobody else is coming along. This is where we live. I'm just. I just say that's at one it. point I thought, should I go back to paper? Like that's how bad I hate this app. You're not going to get me doing that. <laughs> so, pick of the week is, and I'm guessing this was a surprise for you. It was. Beware of the Planet of the Apes, number one, by Mark Guggenheim, art by Alvaro Lopez, color by Brian you, Valenza, and uh, Travis Lanham on letters. You added a word to that title. I it's, did. Yeah, it's just Beware of the Planet of the Apes. He's not Beware of the Planet of the Apes. Just get it, just okay. so everyone knows. Beware of the Planet of the Apes, okay, number right. one. I wrote it correctly. Uh, no, you wrote it correctly. You just went off on a, t- on a thing. That's fine. So uh, uh, you might be wondering why. 
Uh, I saw on the on the cover of this thing, and just now I'm looking for the book. I found it quickly, thank God. Um, it, it's I read the like the it's you know this is takes place in the classic Planet of the Apes story, and I thought oh that's interesting because that last Planet of the Apes story I don't know how the hell Marvel got the license. I guess it's Fox, so that's how. Just because yeah. they got a license means they have to do it. There have been very good Planet of the Apes comics uh, over at Dark Horse. Um, some in the classic Back universe when, and some uh, in the later one. Uh, Gabe Hartman uh, did Gabe, that. Gabriel Hartman did him. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, it's a prequel to the original film, is what it is. Mm-hmm. And like, there's Doctor Zaius, there's Cornelius, uh, is it Zara? And I, I, I open the book to the very first page, and it looks like a '60s comic. And I thought, is this a flashback thing? Like, it looks like Kirby, yeah, it, like a workaday Kirby, not blow you away Kirby. Um. And and I I sort of double checked. I was like, oh, is this thing? And, and so here's the deal. Uh, this is nothing new. It's like, it, first of all, Planet of the Apes is a fucking great movie. Like the original Planet of the Apes movie is. I, I remember the first time I saw it, I was blown away. I was like, that was amazing. I understand why people are still talking about it. And this just lives in that world. But the thing is, this here's what I came up with. We. I think there's been a there's been a, a rush of nostalgia in this show recently, and it for me it isn't so much about like oh this is how it used to be, except in the fact that we have spent so many years reading comics that we've seen everybody try to reinvent the wheel in every possible way, and sometimes you don't do that, you just use the wheel, right? And in, use in the wheel, this guys. instance, you know it's like. It's hard to beat the hot dog. You can deconstruct the hot dog or the donut. Let's let's take the donut. The donut is a thing that when done perfectly in a normal way with fuck chocolate frosting and yeast, it's great. And meanwhile, there are places and they're like, we should put bacon on it and we should put Fruit Loops on it and we should garnish it with, with truffle, well, all this shit. It's like, just no, I just want the donut. So in this case, it's it's a comic book that is fully the thing that it's supposed to be or would have been back in 19 like when's the first movie 66 68 something like that you know if this comic book had come out around that time this is kind of what it would be and there is a simplicity to that which really tickled me and i did think it was very well done mark guggenheim is a veteran um and and he just sort of did this story about you know the apes uh find a bunch of humans you know, they live in a little colony and they're outside of the Forbidden Zone. Whatever. Some of the apes like them. The rest of there's a, it's a it's a not uh, terribly um, uh, obscure um, uh, metaphor for, for subtle. race relations. No, it is not in any way. Um, and I just I just really enjoyed it. And I got to the end and I thought, man, where's the next one? And I hadn't expected it. And it was just so pure. I'm telling you, that first page really got me. And I just thought, oh, this looks just like a book from the '60s, but not even like. But that's only. It should be should be noted that's only two pages of the book. Is like that. Yeah, but the rest no, of it. I want people to be clear. They don't. So don't go to this book looking for a '60s. Like it's only the first two pages. Then it goes. To yeah, back no, to but I don't style. think it was even like intentional. It's just like let's just keep it simple, stupid kind of thing in the best way. Well, and, it's a flashback to the movie. So they go. They go '60s for the. Um, the mm-hmm. Charlton Heston flashback, and then they go sure. to the modern stuff for the for the. Right. Then, they, then there's a couple of panels here and there when they flash back to Heston. It's always in the '60s style. Yeah, uh, and I, I I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed the simplicity of it. And after I was like, oh God, could that be the pick of the week? And the reason was is like it kind of excited me more than uh, a lot of the other stuff I read. And it should be noted, like I I read a lot of comics. Normally, I come back after this and I. I'm way, 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 way behind. And I'm not. I'm pretty well caught up. And for the vast majority of comics I read, I've actually been really enjoying them, sort of not having to read them under the gun. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I've surprised myself. Um, but, you know, I got here in this sort of book I wasn't really thinking about that that in a way isn't really anything special. It made me really happy. And, and it's that sort of just simple thing, you know, that it's not – it's almost like it's not trying to impress me. It just is what it is, and there was something nice about that for me. This is funny because it's not the first time. I, I don't even think it's the first time that uh, an Apes book has been picked. I'm fairly certain. I'm sure not. Old co-host Paul picked it at least once back mm-hmm. in the Hardman days. Um, Those were good books. 
I, I it's funny because when you made this the pick, I went to look for it to read it, and I look, I went to look at the Bloom Studios books, and I was like, where is it? Um, <laughs> uh, so I didn't find it for a second, but um, I just can't get into the world. I've always I try, I try. Really, I, 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 I I'll read the comics occasionally. I've tried several of the films. I just don't care. None of the it's versions. Just one of those so things. The, the- you know, it's like Doctor Who. I just try mm-hmm. and I don't care, and it doesn't. It just, it just, it is what it is. So even this is like a fine the classic, comic. I have another problem with it, but I just finished. I was like, no, yeah, sure. that's good. That was fine. But I think it's I just that, don't that, care. Like all the recent movies were good, but it wasn't the same as the old movie. And the old movie, like the first one's amazing. Then it's kind of diminishing returns after that. Oh, sure, very quickly. Um, in, like in a big way. Yeah. Um, but that to me, that first movie and that Jerry Goldsmith soundtrack. Um, I think it's oh yeah, it's, the first it's is a classic, wonderful. and I like the first yeah. movie, but. Like I tried the first Tim Burton movie, and I tried the first sure. uh, what whatever the new one what, what was the Franco I don't remember. movie. James Franco didn't you know didn't care. Like I just don't care. It's just what it is. Some people just don't care. Fair. I'm one of those people. Yeah, I'm. And I'm not like a giant fan. But you get into these Marvel licenses. Like you love the Aliens books. You love the Predator they've been, books. They've, they've been really strong because they've been putting pros on them. And for years and years, so many of those licensed properties are done by folks on their way up who don't quite have it. Who don't? I mean, we talked about this when we talked about hunger in the dusk. Is mm-hmm. that there's just people who are professionals who've been doing this for a long time are better at it, and a lot of times yeah. those, you know, historically over the two thousands, um, up and you know up until you know five ten years ago, those licensed books were always crap, right? In some way, like either the art was you know they don't they don't pay the page rates. They don't, they don't put the money into it. It's more about keeping – that was always more about like we've got the license. We've got to do it. Nobody was going for it uh, in yeah. that way. And I don't think they are here necessarily, but it's just, it's just you know, skill. Um, you know, it's, it's meat and potatoes. It's that perfect do- – not perfect. It's a great donut. And, and that, I don't know, made me happy. It is a little bit hard to quantify. But I also, when I looked at the books, I said, okay, I think this is the pick. And then I was like, yes, it is. I'm sticking with it. And I, I enjoyed my books this week. So there's, there's no – I'm the guy who goes to the donut store and, you know, has to wade through the artisanal hipster donuts and goes, can I just get the glazed? Yeah. Like, come on. You know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Every artisanal, crazy, crafty donut has disappointed me. (laughs) Every single one. And it's not, it's because you got to do the right thing. It's like uh, when you watch cooking shows, they're always like, make an omelet. Like, that's Mm -hmm. the thing. You know, that's what it feels like to me. And this is an omelet. Uh, cooked well. Uh, that's the third food metaphor. <laughs> Fall of, I'm hungry. It's dinner time for yeah. me. Follow the House of X number one, which you put on the list, which is yeah. almost as shocking as your pick of the where the Pony I, Age. I nearly reached out to Ron today going, are you reading this? <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, I just, and I finished this book and I was like, this is fucking great. <laughs> so into it. So what like, happened? Was in his, it's good. I don't Did the RSV change your personality? In your brain. Did that happen? Certainly that for that, a time. <laughs> this was um so I think what's happening here is we're we're now reaching the crescendo on mm-hmm. the Krakoa era as it's known. And this is now we're entering the fall of the House of X, which I think House of X was one of the first books in that series. I think we're getting another fall book next week. Uh, but as we reach the end of this era, as as X the X-Men face off against Orcus, we have the trial of Cyclops here. And uh this is another Jerry Duggan uh, uh, joint. I, I, I quite <laughs> enjoyed this as well. I, I like this a lot. I thought the Lucas Wernick art was strong. I'm looking mm-hmm. at page seven where we talk about the um, fastball special, and that was that's like an inflection oh. point for the X Men. That was a great page. That angle on that, Wolverine that, coming right at us. Wait, is it this one? Oh, it's the. Um, you said seven. So uh, when we go from eight into nine, mm-hmm. that was one of the most impressive things I read this oh, yeah. week. Yeah. Uh, as we, we, like, there was a, I mean, I'm like a cinematic style cut. It was one of the better page turns I've seen in some time because the, the motion shifts on you as you know, it almost feels like something's wrong, but that's that, that page with Wolverine and all the speed lines and he slices that dude up. That is a wonderful one, two punch. Uh, yeah. Great drawing too. That that if I had to make a pick of the week different, it probably would have been based on that page turn. Right. I mean, it's it's a lot of fun. I've I've enjoyed this era immensely. They Trust seem to be Duggan. having a lot of fun doing it, and you know, there's a lot of. I'm just flipping through this like 
I forgot Wolverine got all fucked up in this. Like he got burned, and so like he's like mm-hmm. half burned during this fight, and he's healing. He's mad. Like, I just we've we've been getting Logan back, which has been nice. They try to attack I mean, the island, Krakoa itself, and it's like human humanoid persona, and that was fun. I just think we're in, we're entering the final stage here of the story, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it resolves and what the next iteration of the X Men is. I think that a I'm picking and choosing which books I read on this very carefully. Sure, and for yeah, the most for part, sure. I don't think I'm reading anything that doesn't have Jerry Duggan's name on it because I wanted to feel like the core story. And so when I looked at this, I saw okay, Duggan's is writing it. That's good, but I just think he's he's picking and choosing the right amount of X Men and kind for me. Mm-hmm. In that, in like, there's other characters around from that extended sort of Claremont. I almost called it a jizz fest, but uh, <laughs> that era. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> just with just that. Thousands Welcome back, everybody. Of people, thousands of characters who I don't know about and don't mm-hmm. care, you know. And and then when the main characters show up, they'd be so mired and stuff. Like I know what everybody's doing here, mm-hmm. and when they go, you know some asides with some different characters. Like it's also classic in like the comic, the villains in this are ridiculous. Right. Like that, that guy, Oh fuck. What's his name? The doctor or whatever with the spade on his face. Yeah. Like, he's such a cartoon villain. <laughs> the one who's not Mr. Like, Sinister apparently. I'm very Yeah. I mean that. like, and you just, they're just like, you just are going to accept this. Uh, you know, and they're, it's, it's what it's supposed to be. It's really good. And then at the end, Lorna is now sort of taking on her dad's, I guess it's still her dad. Who knows? I can't keep track. But her dad's yeah. role as Magneto. And I thought that was a fun like ending sort of uh, cliffhanger. And this is a five-issue miniseries, which I was surprised by. I thought it was going to be a one-issue special. But hey, you know, let's end this whole thing in style. I could still lose interest. Sure. But this is about now. A moment now. It hasn't dragged at all for me. Can I tell you something? I don't read any of the text pages on these X-Men books. Oh, I, I never have. I read them when Hickman did them. I, that's when I stopped. But I every single X-Men book has these text pages. It has a memo or an email thread or, or a history. I don't read a single one. I Not take it in the most cynical way possible is that I'm thinking, like, you're trying to say you're giving me extra pages, but you're not. I, I, I wonder, think it's bullshit. I assume the, I mean, the writer gets his page rate, but those are pages that the artist isn't getting paid on. No, certainly not. Or the, no, or the maybe the letter so. if yeah, they the if they're designing it. But I'm not convinced that the writer's writing it. <laughs> well, know what I mean? Like that feels like that's something like they tell the editor to put together. Possibly. I don't know. I just skip all I, of them. All of them. Like I said, I'm entirely um, uh, uh, cynical about it. I will say, out of all the shitty design I've seen, and everything the design on these books isn't so bad. Uh, relatively yeah. speaking, because they're they, they have a they have a style. They're very distinct. They're you never know they're you're aping. not reading an X Men book. They're aping Hickman. I mean, that's that's what it is. But that's what whatever. It is. Circles. It is. It's Captain great, America, seven hundred and fifty five. <laughs> so I thought this. I didn't get it right. Sorry. Uh, I thought we haven't talked about this book at all. Yeah, I think we must have. No, you and I have not been on at the same time and talked about this book oh, when really? it came out. I don't think so because. It's never come up, so I've never had a chance to, to sort of... I think of... it has, but we, we can... We can... Ooh, okay. Well, that, whatever. Listen, neither one of us were at our best last year, towards it's the true. end of the year, so it could have been any time that we've or talked not about at all. It. I think it's one of those things that lined up on, like on shows I didn't, or we didn't put it in the show when we were... Either way, um, I, I'm curious what you think about it, because I don't know. I, I really enjoy the flashback story. Sure. I don't yeah. really care as much about Cap fighting this demon... Yeah, as model. I feel like we've seen before somewhere recently, but I feel like that's a name that's been used in like, you know, this the Vertigo universe or something. Like that's not that's not a name I don't know. But I really like young Steve Rogers in 1939 New York fighting the Bund, and with Meyer Lansky, with Meyer Lansky as a hero, and Baron von Strucker and Baron Zemo on the other side. Like I really like this this story. Which is, even it, though it's weird to have Meyer Lansky be the sort of one of the heroes, but um. it feels a little on the nose for me in that, like, like the, the Steve stuff is just straight out of that first movie. Yep. The other stuff all really happened, except for, you know, Strucker and uh, uh, Zemo. Zemo. They're Zemo. real historical figures. 
Yeah, I, I, there's there's people, dude. So I don't mind going back and forth. I like the modern stuff um, to the extent of, I, like, I like him being with Sharon, the Steve what doll. What the fuck is she wearing? That's her, like, I know. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get to the core of things. Um, because she was like the, I forget what story it was, but she became like the, the, didn't she become like the crime lord of, of Madripoor or something at one point? I don't know, but look at page 22 and 23. That no, I, I know. It's face terrible. stuff is dumb. I get it. Um, she looks like Lock, not Lockjaw. What's the guy, the claw? <laughs> When did Misty Knight become the fulcrum of the entire Marvel Universe? I don't know if she's everywhere. She's everywhere. And she knows everything. She's like, I don't know. It's weird. Whatever. I don't, I don't really mind it. Uh, the Doctor Strange thing I thought was really funny. My my other comment was just that I I did on several times I turned the pages and I was like, too many fucking words, Michael Straczynski. <laughs> like, they're so much exposition in certain parts of this it goes away it's heavy at the beginning and it sort of gets better like the thing is straczynski is my least favorite writer in in comics right oh wow of all the writers well i mean like of anybody who's worth a damn because the thing is he's worth a damn it's just that historically over the years i feel like he hasn't delivered when it counted Mm -hmm. and so he can make you love a thing and then it always he either leaves or it, it falls flat or like there's things in this that are great, but there's other things in it that it's just, uh, it's too much. Like he likes, like, I feel like you can see where he's in love with his own words. And that has to do with so, sort of knowing, like hearing him talk about stuff and, you know, he has, he has a swagger and he's supposed to, and it's here. Um, <clears throat> you know, but I always I, give it a chance. Yeah. I, there are things I really liked about this issue. I, li- I really liked the so the whole this whole time in the flashback, young Steve has been getting beat up by this one Boond guy. And first of all, Boond is really fun to say. And well, so well, let's just let's just slow slow pedal that just in case. I'm just saying maybe part of their success in the 30s was it was just a lot of fun to say Boond. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> marketing is important. So this one guy's been tormenting him, and then when Steve is trying to stop there. The whole thing is that Von Strucker and Von, uh, Baron Nemo and Von Strucker are going to blow up Madison Square Garden <laughs> where in real life there was a giant American Bund rally. Mm-hmm. And, and then in this comic world, they're going to blow it up and they're going to make martyrs out of them. And it's going to be almost like an American version of the Reichstag. Right. And this guy's like, ah, and if you don't know what this. that means, if you don't know what that means, a shame on you, and B, uh, you got a lot of reading to do. But the guy's like, I'm not. I didn't sign up for this. Like, I didn't yeah. sign up for killing I ten thousand people. And I kind of like that. Is like, you can, you know, not every bad guy has to be a hundred percent evil. And mm-hmm. he's doesn't. He's so. The, I like the shade of him going. You know, there's, there's there's a line, and this is too far. And and that was good. And and again, Meyer Lansky is a good guy in this. <laughs> and. He's not. It's fine. It's just, I like it a lot. I thought the Doctor Strange bit where he's the doll was funny, but also kind of stupid, but kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, it was, it was like one step too much. It's like, you know, like don't show too much. Of yeah, the joke. it was like one or two, t- too many jokes. Yeah. 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 But then one of a couple of them would land. Anyway. Yeah. No, it was, it was funny. It was well done. The art was, this is a fill in artist. This is going to be the theme of the show. Land Medina Ooh. filling in for Jesus. Um, not uh, Jesus Marino. Is he the regular artist? I believe so. Uh, it wasn't as good. but Page, um, page 23, you got a squat-ass cap. He looks like Hellboy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the same page with fucking Sharon's. Why does she have a chin thing? What is what is going on with that? Communications. Anyway, I, 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 I enjoy this book. It's it's much better than the, the previous volume. Yes. But, uh, I didn't finish that. I actually stopped reading yeah, it. Yeah, we both did. I just, but, it, it, I, you're right. Like the demon part is. It, like I don't I'm super feel like into the flashback. Then everything we go now, the cap's being tormented by the demon. I go, oh, never. Well, mind. I, yeah, and I don't need. I don't want to find out that the, the, the demon was part of the earlier story because it doesn't right. need to be. So I thought, you know, if we're doing, uh, where is it? One of the one of the books we uh, the other ca- Hydra Cap becomes the new Flag Smasher, and I was like, that's all right. That works for me. Right. But, but like the villain here should be something like that because. 
if if you're talking about parallel structure, you've got the the story before is you know that kind of evil that right. lives it's in human men. Evil. It's real evil, Doesn't right? Need to exactly, have and so inspired. right, exactly. So that's weird to have it in the other thing, but you know, all things equal, I'm reading it. I just opened the wrong comic up, but well, Fantastic Four seven hundred eight, which means it's going to take a few minutes to open the right one up. First of all, I love the cover by Alex Ross of the giant brain. It's just so very sixties sci-fi um chasing the people in Fantastic Four. Uh you know what's interesting reading this issue? This is Ryan North and Yvonne Fiorelli, and so finally here we have the moment in which everyone returns. The uh the building, the Baxter building returns, the people return. I found myself kind of going, oh man, I kind of liked the way it was going with just the four of them. Yeah. I was really enjoying that dynamic to have all the kids back and you know, in the in in the real world, should these people be real? Obviously, very happy that all their children have returned. But mm-hmm. as just in my fake comic world, where I'm reading just reading these stories, I was like, oh man, I was really kind of just enjoying this tight cast of the four of them, and now we've got. I mean, eight. I, I'm you know? two. I'm two ways on it, and one is that yes, you're right. I guess five. But two is that their motivating factor this entire time, and the tension that was going on in the background was that this other story was happening. And then two is because I have an affection for these characters, I wanted to see their work rewarded. Mm -hmm. Like I I felt for them, which is kind of interesting. Two things that I really liked about this, and it's such a broken record at this point to be like, Ryan North's Fantastic Four is so fucking smart, (laughs) I can't stand it. Opening up with a 60s talk show Mm -hmm. A Dick Cavett type show where the guest is an incredibly intelligent person talking about complicated and intelligent things, which is a real thing that happened and does not happen now. No. Was such a cool thing because, A, the Fantastic Four are born out of that era. Yes. You know, you have a guy come on and they talk about physics. Carl Sagan was a regular guest on talk shows, you know, um... I know that there's Neil deGrasse Tyson or whatever, but it is not the same. Like Dick Cavett. No, would the have, conversations aren't the same. Yeah. I mean, they would have real thinkers on those kind of things. And I just thought that's really beautiful as a thing to sort of uh, call back to. Um, secondarily, I really liked – it took me a little while to remember what the hell was going on. But I really liked that the meta mind, the, the quote-unquote villain, mm-hmm. our conception of it changed through the story. And it became – at first you're thinking that Reed's just humoring him or whatever, but they're not. They're, they're you know, like, no, you're, you're, you're something special. We're not going and, – and so then what happens to it is, is really sad. And it's a wonderful and efficient reversal of expectations that right. happens in this. Um, that, that, I mean, that's deft. That's really that's strong. That's creepy, this version of yes. it, where it's – the China brain, which is the concept of the, in the 60s talk show of this uh, uh, almost like a human computer, like where the, where intelligence gets scattered across m- multiple nodes of people. And the, I, I thought that was interesting. But then how, having the computer, and it's not a new concept having, you know, someone, a creepy a creepy entity inhabiting, oh. you know, a sweet little girl or whatever. But it, like I thought the way that the, if, the way that these random people in New York were talking to the Fantastic Four through the meta mind was creepy and good. I, Yes, it was. And and I, I kept going, that wouldn't happen. And then I was like, that would happen. <laughs> because they're getting stupid rewards that aren't even like a real thing. Right. But I, I was like, I can't tell myself that wouldn't happen because I don't believe it. A couple of other things. When I, by the way, just flipping through this, as I flip through it, I was like, I can't believe this much happened in what seems like this few pages. It's yeah. kind of amazing. Um, you have that wonderful page where they they write a note to Doom. And just the subtle way which that is portrayed because he wants to – like he'd want to know that the kids are back and okay. And that's all they give you, just a little bit. And then finally, like after the letters page, there's one more little page where like we get that little cliffhanger. You know, like, well, it could be this problem. And then we right. close the issue. Um, that's a fucking master class. It's a wonderful it's so comic. It's, it's better than we deserve. <laughs> It's. I, I did finish reading this, going. You know what? We've said it many times, and but I'll say it again. This is what the what I said in my head, and I'm saying it on the show. Is we've had so many years now of good Fantastic Four comics, and it's been just wonderful. You, 
you people don't understand. You probably do because you read comics just like we do. But like it was, it was a desert, and I am including the Hickman run in that because it may have been great, but it wasn't. It wasn't Not for this. you. Not for you. No, it wasn't Fantastic Four. Uh, you know, in the way that I understand it, they weren't in blue. <laughs> I don't like. Yeah, yeah, it's true. They were in white. God, There's a dragon mean, guy. They were just walking oh. around the city in your white outfit. It's a. I mean, a, at, least, that's a mistake. at least Moon Knight's in the shadows. My kid wanted some white Chuckies, and I was like, dude, that's not going to work for you. He got them, and they're brown as shit already. You got to wash them. It's only so far you can go, though. They're the white ones, not the natural color. There's a difference. I have the white ones. Yeah, but I just you're, wash an them adult. So often. you're an adult. That's true. You're not running around. Patreon.com slash iFanboy. Hey, everyone. We're back. We're back with another year of shows for you to enjoy, hopefully. To enhance uh, your pleasure and your comic book reading experience, and we hope you can consider in this the new year sp- uh, helping us. Just you know, keep the show going, keep the lights on, help pay the bills, and you do that for Patreon.com/ifanboy. And this is the new media economy where you're either part of the giant conglomerate or you're having your listeners support you or your viewers or whatever your whatever your audience is. That's the way it is. Nobody likes it, but here we are. You can directly support the show by being a patron. You can unlock shows for everybody. You can become part of a great community on Discord and Facebook. You can be you can come hang out in the monthly patron hangout. We had a bunch of new people join the last one. They had a good time watching. Uh, Josh was too sick for it, but Ron and I held the fort down. It was fun. Um, and then you get rewarded for it. Not only do you get all the great community and support and love, you also get rewards. You get tiered exclusive rewards you get t-shirts and mugs and posters and stickers and all depending on what, what level you're at uh, it's it's super awesome we don't even get it it's 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 exclusive to patrons and we thank everyone who supports the show through patreon it's the it's the main way and we thank you honestly there wouldn't be a show without you i found out threadless.com is our t-shirt store we got 13 designs on there hopefully this is this year we'll add a people more i found com slash support is our paypal digital tip jar Fembo.com slash Amazon is a great uh, shopping link. If you got some returns to do at Amazon and after some after your gifts and you, you got some credits, post holiday shopping could be done there. Inter gener, just general shopping could be done there. I don't know that I ever spend as much money as I do the evening of Christmas. <laughs> well, I didn't get this stuff. <laughs> I I was at my mom's house and it was more like, oh, that's broken, or that that thing's been broken for how many months? Oh, you Ship just replaced tomorrow. all her shit. Yeah. Nice. So you can do that through Amazon. I think I'm slash Amazon. Oh, why isn't your iPad charging? Maybe the cord's dead. Let's get you a new cord. Uh, also, you know, on that page, you can find Booksplode links. All the books we've been talking about the last couple of years on Booksplode are found there. And you can, we can we thank you for sh- using those links. And then bookshop.org is our partner to help local bookstores. Is when you order through them, local bookstores ship your order. And they get the money. And it's great. It helps the vibrant heart of a community, which is your local bookstore. And we thank you very much. I also ordered a bunch of those books over the holidays from bookshop.org. Let's move on. So many books. Let's move on to Amazing Spider-Man 935 or 41. I've been loving this gang war, and we're only halfway through (laughs) it, which doesn't feel like we are narratively, but we are, according to the checklist. I read all those gang war books over the break that that were on the list. I read every gang war book. That's nice. It's, it's, look, it's, uh, listen, listen, listen to us. This is a year I will say ago. This. People are like, you guys hate comics. Which no, we don't. not at all. I know. I will say this. I, I will, you I will tell me. I will give one criticism, and this is a Zeb Wells, John I, Romita Jr. book. Zeb, uh, John Romita Jr.'s Kingpin is two feet too short. Actually, I, I put this on here because I had one comment, and it was that there are – I'm, I'm going to insult a master. Yeah. Not insult, but I'm going to take him to task. There are two fight scenes that happen in this book. They happen at the same time uh, between pages, and they all seem to be in small, low ceiling rooms. And they are <laughs> comprised completely of close ups. And I was like, "This is terrible! Like this is worse than a than a Marvel TV show hallway fight." It was, it was, re- it was really like shortcutty. And I thought, "This is not the bombastic kind of fight." Like it was in a, it was like in a regular room with a low ceiling. And, and I was like, and so like the fight would start and, and Kingpin and Tombstone immediately just get into a bear hug that lasts seven pages. It was the well, weirdest I thing. I kind of like the brutality of it because they were in close quarter combat. I, they were headbutting. I, they were biting. Like it felt I guess, like a brutal there was fight. No, there was no dynamism to how it was pr- pr- um, shown though. 
It didn't. Yeah, but I don't know if that's what this is about, right? It's a, it's a gang war in the streets of New York. It's not like it's a big. It was in a tiny know, room, but there was like a bunch of people. Or like, I don't know. I just, I think, I think it could have been done better. Uh, I just, there's I know no, it could have page been done four or location four, apparently. Now pages are called locations. They've um, been like that. <laughs> Kingpin should be the tallest guy in that shot. Uh, he's a, he's all, the only person who's taller than is Peter. He's, you know, shorter than Tombstone, shorter than She Hulk. Like, he should be the biggest guy in that room. And that's he's just too short. <laughs> the, the, there is a thing about, and you're you're not wrong. I'm not disagreeing with you, but there is a thing where Kingpin's one of those characters can be drawn a bunch of different ways. But he does have to be tall and big and imposing. I don't I don't disagree with you. There also is the moment where he yells at Typhoid Mary, which totally goes counter to their relationship as shown in X Men books. And I was like, hmm. But um, they I they like- covered that really nicely though with how she ended that bit. Right, like it makes you mad, and you fight so good. And I was like, "That's actually really good." But why is she typhoid Mary again? I had to read her whole Wikipedia page after this because I was like, <laughs> "Wait a minute." And she's she got that typhoid fucking, Mary again in the X Men books. I don't she's know. She's got that late eighties comic indie comic book hair that was mm-hmm. just like the Matt Wagner. It's terrible. That's what all the women look like from like eighty eight to ninety one. Magpie, and it's terrible. Yeah. Um. It's, I know what you're talking about, like with that page of like the two faces. Uh, if you're on uh, digitally, page 16. Mm-hmm. Um, but like all the rest of them, like it's just too close quarters. Like the rooms are too small. They're both in exactly the same location. The colorist just did one in pink and one in green. It's like it's like he was on a deadline and had to go quick. Maybe, but the layouts I think could have been much stronger. Anyway, but it's also, just... I mean, it's not it's not a big climactic battle in the story. We still have. This is going to end in March. It's not that. It's just I just thought it was boring looking. All right. When when I saw Thanos on the list, Thanos number two, I thought, "Am I reading that?" I did read I, that. I did too. I had to like Am do I a lot of research. It? I was like, um, I never read one. We're good. I thought we did. Wasn't it a patron pick? I don't, I didn't read. I looked through it. I'm, I'm fairly certain like, we talked about it. I don't trust Maybe your you memory weren't on the show, at all. But I, but like I also don't trust my it. memory. Uh, what I think about this book is, is that this is like the Christopher Cantwell All Stars in that every <laughs> major character in this book is a broken genius, and that's what he excels at. So in this issue, we have Reed and Doctor Strange and Tony Stark and Emma Frost all bickering, and then you had Bruce Banner in the mix all bickering in the very entertaining Christopher Cantwell way. I especially mm-hmm. enjoyed the scene where nobody wanted to call in Bruce Banner; and they were all too scared to. And I just thought, you know, this is like he's taking every character type that he is really good at known for writing on television or whatever and putting them in a room together. And it's I thought this is enjoyable in that sense. Birds of Prey number five. Uh, what would, I've, I've enjoyed the hell out of this series up to now, but I don't know if I have anything to say about this issue. So please. Well, the thing about this comic and the next one is this. Uh, we'll talk about Birds of Prey number five and I, uh, I guess parallel Shazam number seven, but I'll do them separately. Is that this was this was the first issue with a fill-in artist, and the artist's name was Aris Dean, and I read it quickly. And I thought it said Artist Dean. And I was I like, I just did. I thought I screwed up. No, I was like, art caused by artist. And I was like, yeah, the artist did it. No, um, very, 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 very different style than has been on the book so far from uh, uh, uh Leo. Who was it, Leo? Who, Leonardo who, DiCaprio. Who is it? Leo who? Leo not going to work here anymore. Leo I Michael. loved uh, Le- Leonardo. No, that doesn't sound right. You you say what you're saying. I'm going to look that up while you're doing it. The art before in the previous issues was magnificent. Yeah, it's it's the cover artist. It's uh, Leonardo Romero. Okay, there you Leonardo go. Leonardo Romero and Jordi Valera were the, the Joker artists, in and- the 60s, right? And the, the that previous style is very sort of grounded, and the colors are muted, and and this is like totally different, and not necessarily bad, right. but the colors are really bright and garish, and and the art style is very sort of sexier. Like in the very first panel, we're looking right mm-hmm. up Dinah's crotch, um, and it was just it just it's a whiplash, and I don't know why you would go that different. For a fill-in artist, you should, I, mean, I mean, I feel like you need to try to find someone more closely in the style of the. Of I mean, the book. it may have been a you know 
last minute business is who we could get. You never, you know, there's all sorts of things that could happen. Somebody yeah, drops so it's, out. It's a, it doesn't feel, I mean, I don't know. It doesn't feel like a, like a last minute fill in because these pages are jam packed with art. I don't even mean like that, but like given the schedule, you got to get somebody in. This is who's available. We'll go, we'll have to go with this. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. I just, yeah, I don't know. I mean, at that point, like it's almost better to have the book be late because it's just, it's a certain type of book and you're going in a different direction with the art. Again, I'm not saying the art's bad. I'm not, no, I don't it think isn't, the but I don't think the art's appropriate. And it doesn't mean, I think just it's, it's just a wrong style. It's a bummer because it happened. I'm I'm guessing maybe maybe the the original artist like you know like had to get off earlier or couldn't get to this one or like they were way behind. I mean, there's all sorts of things that could happen, but you want an artist on the whole arc. And yeah. it was a, the art was really a big part of what made the 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 book great. The script does a lot of work, but um, and I I agree with you. And uh, also, the, I thought I mean I thought the panel layouts were just it was just bonkers sometimes. Like, I mean, not necessarily in a good way. It's just very busy and a lot happening. Mm-hmm. But uh, so that was a bit disappointing. And then the same thing for Shazam, Shazam number seven. Uh, Mark Wade, and previously it had been Dan Moore. And we know Dan Moore can't draw everything, even though he was apparently trying Can to. Can he? Um, this was the big issue in which Shazam or the Captain fights Black Adam, and we haven't seen that in forever. It's a big action issue, and it's drawn by Goran Suzuka, who is a great artist, not a big superhero guy, not a big action guy, more of an indie comics vibe guy. And so this was a big disappointment. And I, I'm a big fan of Goran Suzuka. That's not the way you say the name, but that's all I can do. Um, I think that's right. Well, there's an accent over the Z. I don't know how it, what it does to the Z. But the thing is, every time I see Goran Suzuka, I get excited because I think it's going to be Goran Parlov, and brother, it ain't. <laughs> it just was disappointing. Again, like not a bad artist, but just bad for the book. Like a bad choice. Yeah. And it almost well, would have been in, better in to switch and have Goran Suzuka draw Birds of Prey. And Aris Dean yeah. draw Shazam. It, that might have been more appropriate than than this. And it also, like, uh, I feel like Goran didn't couldn't figure out how he wanted to draw the captain himself, and so the face was constantly different. There was only I one just, point I just where shuddered. where the um you could just, the face you actually just, looked like can, Captain Marvel or should look. But you can call him Captain Marvel. You should I get it. I'm trying to be good. No, but the, the, the face was totally different every time. And there was one point. There was like a there's like a profile shot where like oh that looks like captain marvel supposed to look but the rest of them didn't it just was a kind of a mess and again from an artist i really like just not the right book for that artist just not not right and uh it was disappointing you're not right goran look at you you're not right all right understand right for it terrific artist star wars colon darth vader number 42 yeah um while the the break was away, the Dark Droids storyline, uh, which was the big event that was going across all the Star Wars books, which was also great. Like, it was great. Uh, I love that, how much you that, enjoyed reading comics on the break. I'm telling you, I really did. I mean, maybe it was just because I was so miserable all the time that I <laughs> could escape in those things. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, at Darth Vader, it, it sort of touched on it. Um, basically, a bunch of droids... Uh, droid takes over everything and the idea is that they want to get start to be able to take over they take over all the droids they want to be able to take over organics too and one of the ways they get there is by going through uh people who are somewhat organic and robotic and as you know darth theater is one of those characters and so like the last issue was this thing where what about lobot it looks yeah he was taken over he's one of the reasons that they could get into quote the meat um uh, it was it was a really good story, and and at the end of the last issue, it looked like they took over Darth Vader, and as we get to this one, it turns out that no, of course you didn't take over Darth Vader; he took over you, and you know whatever it was. But there's this ongoing, you know, you know how the it's in the prequels actually is like the Sith always to they're we they gotta try to take each other because that's kind of what this book is. It's just Darth Vader being fucked with by the Emperor constantly. And goaded into trying to get more power so that he he's can take worst, out the he's emperor. He's just the worst boss. He is, but it's ridiculous. It's forty-two issues of this run. There was another thirty-something of the other one, and that's all it is. It's the like they've made a very good choice on this. Is Greg Pak and uh, mm-hmm. Adam Gorham? They've made a very good choice of this to not try to get deep about Darth Vader. Right. It's this not what's going on. It's it's the, the Palpatine's a dick. And Vader 
And like, there's a bunch of like imperial hangers on who are like, yeah, we'll fuck with Vader. And Vader kicks the shit out of him, which Palpatine <laughs> also loves. And it's just that's all it is. A uh, it's so what, what is the time frame in this again? Uh, this one is, um, I want to say either before or after Empire, but in the middle of them. So and was again, was Luke also attacked for having the metal? The hand? Yeah, like they they basically the idea is they have adventures in between it, but it's all been very careful to not. It doesn't change any of the story. It doesn't doesn't oh, really wait, add is, a lot. Luke hasn't lost his hand yet. No, no, no. You're right. So it's all pre Empire. I think so it's between not, the two. He's not a man. What's also made of metal. He's just. I'm also. It, it, I'm getting mixed up because I'm also reading that Zahn book you gave me last year, the the Scoundrels book. I'm not mm-hmm. too far in, but that takes place in the same time period. So I was trying to make sure I didn't screw that up. But you know, like I said, like it's not. It's it's smart because it is not trying to explain or elucidate anything that happened. Right. In the, it's just separate adventures which is kind of what we always wanted when we were kids. I want to see adventures of this. It's not mm-hmm. answers and, and, and trying to get deep on it. That's not what's happening. Um, anyways, uh, you know, this has been great for a while and it, you know, that whole event was good and this is another good issue. So those are the books we're going to talk about. Those other books, we could have mentioned all kinds of other books. We've got another sure. perspective of the story and love everlasting, but we don't have time for that. We have to go to the patron pick patreon.com slash I fanboy. Every patron of the show gets to vote every week to add a book to the rundown this week. The winner Far and away was Pine and Merrimack, number one from Boom Studios, written by Kyle Starks with art by Fran Galan and letters by Pat Brousseau. And another Kyle Starks book from another publisher. Let's jump in. Did you notice that they're called they're called the Kents? They're the Kents, and her name is Linnea. L-I-N-N-E-A, which I'm not convinced is an actual name, but I at some point they said they're either the the Kents, and I was like, "Huh." And it's not like a, it's not like there's a metaphor going on here. Although she right. doesn't not look like Lois Lane in the in the current comics. <laughs> um. So this is a married couple, private eye team. The uh, wife was a homicide detective whose uh, sister went missing when she was a child that spurred her on to become a, a cop. Her husband is a uh, was a boxer who was okay, not a great boxer, but was a boxer nonetheless. He's the muscle; she's the brains. And they are private eyes. She moves back to her hometown, which is normally means they move to some podunk place out of nowhere. But instead, it's it's a really wealthy community, uh, you know, in an, in a natural area. Like imagine a Colorado or where I live up by Lake Winnipesaukee. There's a place called Wolfboro and like rich people live there. It seems more like Be- that because it's Jamesport established 1752. Yeah. So it pro- sounds like it's more like a main, like a wealthy yeah. main town. Right, but like you know, rich people buy property and they live there, and but it's also there's an element of sort of townies and stuff, and there's a biker bar, and it's it's there's you know he's making it up, it's whatever he needs it to be, um, right. and one thing that I think was great is the relationship between the husband and wife in this, which I think is my favorite part of it, is that like he is utterly committed to her, he's not in charge, she is, but given the chance, he will beat some fuckers up and he'll beat them up good. Mm-hmm. Um, which is which is just a little bit of like that's Kyle Starks there. Like he's always got to have a really tough guy somewhere. And <laughs> that's true. His he name's kind of boring here, um, but in this, you know, you have it. Um, I thought it looked really good. Uh, I know that I've heard the name Fran Galan somewhere. There's some other book that we read. It looks like what does it look like? It looks like a like a book that looks like a Mark Miller book. I wouldn't be shocked mm-hmm. if Mark Biller snaps up this artist at some point soon. But it is just like regular people done in a... Exaggerated. Exaggerated, cartoony, almost animated cartoony style, I think. Um, but kind of sketchy at the same time. Kind of loose and, and and like, you know, you can see... It's digital, but you can see the art of yeah. it. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember what the story is because I'm remembering situations... The well, girl they, goes missing. They, Some people come in and they say, "There's a girl missing that's right. similar to what her her sister went through." Right. We find out at the very end that she's like she's in this hidden in this uh, facility in the woods of clearly Maine. Um, someone has abducted her, and it's, her turn will be soon. It's you know, creepy and dark. What's funny about it is that she's like, "I'll take this one," and he's like, "We don't do that." And then yeah, she's they like, "Only do non serious cases. They do right. Well, not non serious. They do cheating, they do cheating and, spouses, and they do frauds. Yeah. They don't do murders. They don't do kidnappings. But now they are. 
Well, it, the thing was, she's like, this is just like my sister. And I was like, you actually just said it. Like, you told us. I don't think you needed to, but, no. you know, that's fine. Uh, there's a long scene in the middle where a guy comes in and, like, he's trying to get he's trying to get them to find his wife cheating and it, it turns out he's an asshole and she turns the tables on him, which has nothing to do with the plot whatsoever, but it was very enjoyable. Um, you know, we, we learned about the characters too. through that. Um, yeah. I actually, my least favorite part was the husband. Um, <laughs> I thought he was kind of a caricature and not as well-rounded as the other characters in the book. He is almost comically in love with his wife and not that it's a bad thing, but it's, it's so like kind of, he has no other personality than I, that. I would suggest, and I don't think that you're wrong, but I feel like it's a comment on the female character that is always this person in this situation. It's the kind Maybe. of thing like, what's her name? Betty in uh, Rocketeer or almost literally any female character in <laughs> Betty Draper or... Um, yeah, like, like just the, the, like, like smart, intelligent women who are around people who are completely fucked up and like that, the male lead of any given TV show. I don't know. Like, I, I kind of think they made him that way on purpose. Like he's, he's like, he's like the family dog in a way. Yeah. He almost feels like a character from another Kyle Starks book, but it's not this one because this one <laughs> is more sort of grounded and realistic than the stuff he's written in the past. And this, he feels more exaggerated. Um, like he said, lots of serious head injuries and there's nothing else to his personality but like making her a drawing, you know. Yeah. I think it'd be much more interesting if he was more of a human being. So when he does get into like Terminator mode, it's much more interesting than Maybe. for me anyway. But I didn't dislike it. I thought this was fun. I didn't love it. I thought it was solid. And I will, I'll keep reading it, but I was I, a little disappointed. I didn't love it, but I did like it a lot because I like Kyle Stark's work but one of the things i like about him is that you don't really know what to expect mm -hmm. and he can do wacky and he's done enough sort of down to earthy things and there's this is pretty straightforward i mean honestly it's a it's a private detective story i mean we're gonna find, hopefully it's not gonna be like all the other books we find out it's the demon who controls the end of the world or whatever who knows right but you know it's it's pretty grounded but there's a little bit of his uh, unique perspective, I think, sure. uh, in here. I really like the art. I thought the art was fantastic. Yes. Um, yeah, I I, 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 uh, I enjoyed it. I didn't love it, but I, I really liked it. So Pine and Merrimack, number one, from Boom Studios, ratings. Ratings out of five. I just thought ratings. of the part where they explained the name of their detective agency and the title. I'm like, what is it? It's the streets. It's where they connect. Pine and Merrimack. <laughs> it's, like, it's pretty good. Um four i'm gonna go three and a half sticking with it's it a so, it's a it's a soft four yeah uh creep show that's that's maybe i saw them in creep show um yeah uh yeah yeah i'm gonna read the next one yeah, yeah. patreon.com slash ifanboy you can vote to add a book to the rundown if you're a patron everyone can please do uh thank you for voting let's also Keep the patron power, patron love going with the patron power. This is the reward that you get if you're a patron at the $5 or higher level. It's not really on the rewards tier. It's just something we do for fun. And I thank you for being a patron. So this week, the winner is Gabriel Joseph. He of two names. Two first names. Gabriel Joseph is a human old-timey stock ticker. What I mean by that is if you ask him a question... His mouth will open and an old-timey stock ticker will start coming out with the stock ticker noise and it'll have the answer on on it. It could be short if it's a short answer, but you could if it's a long answer. And also it comes out in the backwards order. So like, you know, you're used to reading left to right, but the stock ticker comes out. You got to read it straight as it comes out. So everything's backwards. Does that I'm make sense? To, I'm just, all I'm thinking about is where this came from. It does it to nowhere. It came from the depths of my of my brain. Yeah. That's fair. It uh, if you said, "Hey, what's pi to fifteen po per, you know fifteen places?" It would just come, tick, 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 start coming out. Does he keep a glass? <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't have a dome over <laughs> glass his head. cover over his head. <laughs> <laughs> no, should have. I just love an old stock ticker. I know. <laughs> you could like you if know. if there was like a if there was like a, a quiz 
where they said, we're going to, to give you the name of a bunch of things and you tell us if Connor likes it or not. <laughs> like it was like, likes it, doesn't like it. And they said, mm-hmm. old timey stock ticker, pretty much old timey anything I'm pretty safe to go with. <laughs> but it's like, that's got everything. It's sort of just far enough that it's it's not quite in our lifetime. It's a New York City thing. It, yep. it has to do with ostentatious wealth. It's, it's, an, it's, it's patently ridiculous and you'd like to have it in your living room. I would love it. And I know. You know, it, he, you could be like, hey, Gabriel, did did Connor and Josh ever talk about Captain America? And it'd be like, the answer would come yeah. out. Mm-hmm. So that's also part of it is, this, is the, uh, the knowledge. Well, there you go. But Gabriel doesn't know it. It's the ticker that does. Yeah. Think about that for a minute. I mean, well, here's the thing. Is the ticker part of him? It's, it's, it's a mystery. You have to ask the ticker. Can the ticker be removed and he still lives? <laughs> <laughs> what I don't even know where it would be. Mm-hmm. It's sort of magic. It comes, just appears. It's not like he's got a spool of paper in his stomach that sticks it. It just you know comes out. It does stop though. It's not constant, right? Right. He's not oh. constantly regurgitating a ribbon of paper. <laughs> so the, the question's answered. It stops. He's got to remember to breathe through his nose or he gags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you get the stuff he knows, he's all over. Patreon.com slash fanboy. Thanks for being a patron, Gabriel. Uh, you can be one for, uh, also at the five dollar heart level. Get your own superpower live on the show. Thank you very much. Do you want to do one or do you want to wrap it? Let's do one. Do the first one. Scott from Portland, Oregon, one of our regular letter writers. Scott writes in. I've been thinking about this question basically my whole life. I'm very pedantic and I try to keep it to myself. But whenever someone calls a trade paperback collection a graphic novel, it makes my teeth hurt. It's not a big deal, but it's technically wrong. It made me wonder, though, do you ever find yourself getting pedantic about anything in the world of comics? This could be how people talk about the industry, characters, or creators. Whatever floats your pedantic boat, this is your chance to talk about it in a safe space. I mean, Scott, I know you're familiar with the show. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not like, it's not like there are no examples of this. I mean, the very easy one, the very, very easy one is we're super pedantic about the numbers, about mm-hmm. the Marvel num- renumbering, or any renumbering, it's mostly Marvel. Uh, I'm really, really pedantic about the titles. I'm very pedantic about saying the proper title. Putting, I think comic fans in general, it's not just comic fans, but for whatever reason, always drop the, the direct and indirect articles off the titles themselves and call it Amazing Spider-Man instead of The Amazing Spider-Man. I'm very pedantic about that. Did you always write The Amazing Spider-Man? Yeah. But you know, there's such a thing as like colloquial shorthand, though. Yeah, but it's it's not the title of the book. The title of the book is The Amazing Spider-Man. Same thing as Human oh Target. The Human Target. Uh, it's, it's I'm not. Going, I'm going uh, back to the videotape, motherfucker. It's not I'm righteous gonna... search for vengeance. It's a righteous search for vengeance. I just, it's, it's interesting. That's all. I'm very pretending about the titles, though. You're, I mean, um, you're, we always called you the captain, but I think we know what you were captain of. <laughs> Pedanticism. Is that correct? Is that the noun of that? I don't know. Uh, uh, if I if I had to pick, I'm sure there's lots of things, but um, the only time I ever post about. Uh, comics on Instagram is uh-huh. when there are lettering and layout mistakes, which makes things difficult to read. It drives me insane. But is that being pedantic? I think so, because I think most people, including you, don't really care about it that much. But when I see a professional comic book artist and team put together a page that does not read correctly, it drives me insane. This is all they're there to do. It is the most important thing to do is to make sure that it reads clearly. And you can see you can see where someone screwed up. And then I really like to sort of figure out who, like if the letterer made it worse, or usually the letterer does their damnedest to help. Um, I've talked about left-hand panel stacking, but that's just an example of it. And there's times where you can make that work. They did it better in older comics and newer comics for some reason. It Like storytelling mistakes – in a professional book, drive me insane. I hate it, and I will point it out every time. There's one I do. I do want to mention. I even said, I even said, Amazing Spider-Man in the show. My point is, I use it when it's like the official uses of it, like in the, sure. the show notes or the scripts or whatever. But, I, but I, if you're just a person else. talking, then yeah, yeah. you don't need to use it. But when we write it out, right? Like oh, yeah. on the no, website that, or whatever. That, that, that I agree with. Yeah, that's but fine. people don't even Doesn't do that. Anyway, we're, I mean, there's a million things. Uh, you know what? I can't I, we're think not going to be like we're both. <laughs> we're both annoyed 
about the thing we talked about, and the other one doesn't care. It's just like it's such a good example of being pedantic. Can right. I tell you about the worst one in my personal life that has nothing to do with comics? Okay. That is gonna like if I'm gonna get divorced, it's gonna be this. Uh-oh. Whenever anybody says you're doing good, I cannot help myself. I go, well, well, yeah, this is grammar. Everyone should be pretending about grammar. L- Lindsay will like you did real good, and I was like, well, shut up. <laughs> it's not correct. People don't yeah, care. I, about I have that, that problem with less and fewer people use. I'm those not good words at that. Wrong. I know there's a difference, but I don't. I don't trust myself to get it correct. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm always saying fewer under my breath. Fewer. It's daylight saving time. Well, I, I do. There's another one I do. Yeah. If they say uh, somebody was hung, I go hanged. <laughs> because if somebody has been, uh, you know, like killed by the noose, you've been hanged, not hung. Right. Whereas hanged. if you're uh, well endowed, then you're hung. Exactly. Thomas Jane, for example. All right. Well, that was fun. One to start the show, start to start the year off with. Yeah. Or, as a as a reminder. So first of all, thanks to Scott for writing it. As a reminder. We wiped clean the slate of emails last year, so we ha- we only have a- we have a handful in the email box right now. But if you, this is a great chance now to get your email in. And now that the year started off with uh, with less competition, contact at ifanboy.com is your place to send us an email in to get on the show. We thank you very much. You can also write in for our media explode show, but put media explode in the title so we know or the subject line so we know what what emails for. And here's where we plug other shows. Uh, we just haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> it's we just started back on. Uh, Ron's on vacation. We haven't scheduled a media explode record yet. There'll be a media explode this, later this month. Oh God, is there supposed to be a book explode? Yeah. Well, we have to figure what <laughs> we got to figure what that's. We we were just on vacation mere days ago. But not only that, but you asked stuff before, like you were asking about stuff before New Year's, and I was like, "Fuck off! I'm not answering this now. <laughs> I'm not even thinking about it. And if I'm behind, I'm behind. It's also I was sick. Go fuck yourself. So I, we I mean, will need to figure it, out." When the media split is and when the books – did we talk about a book before the year ended? Might have. It's gone right. now. I was – I was – I was – I had a fever for days. In your RSV fever stupor, you think, I think you suggested a book. We'll figure it out. There I will be I a did. book split and there will be a media split this month. We'll, when those happen, we'll let you know. Same thing with the patron hangout. We just, we just are not ready yet. Listen, you're uh, going to get your shows. This is like a soft launch of a restaurant. <laughs> We're not quite ready yet. It's all about service. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can Let's find our library. You can find our library of over one thousand three hundred shows and counting over at ifanboy.com or wherever fine podcasts are sold, distributed, available for download, or otherwise uh, uh, presented uh, for your perusal. You can follow us at ifanboy comics on Instagram to find out that what the pick of the week is before the show comes out. And sometimes you'll get the best of the week in panels that that should be coming back at some point. Provided you know there's there's a lot, there's a lot going on all the time. We're on vacation. Follow us individually at CS Kilpatrick on Instagram and J.A. Flanning on Instagram. Um, that's it. That's for me. I'm done. I'm done with that Subscribe part. to YouTube.com slash iFanboy. That's where you'll find our old video shows plus this show plus the uh, All Media Year and Roundup. We put that up there for the first time this past week or this past month or whenever it happened. You can find all that stuff at YouTube.com slash iFanboy. You can find our old videos, our old, you know, nonsense and shorts and there's probably f- donut talk there. I don't know. That was a long time ago. Anything could have happened. I don't remember any of it. So <laughs> check it out. Please consider writing a review or star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. I hope you're hearing this if you're an Apple Podcast listener because apparently they added a thing where if 15 days go by between you listening to a show, they just stop downloading it to you to your system. So that's cool. So hopefully you're you're listening to this and hope since the majority of our listeners are Apple Podcast users. Um, We'll see how that goes. <laughs> we took like two weeks, two and a half weeks off. <sighs> it's uh, it's a mandated pod fade. I will tell you, my friend, I made liberal use of my mute button uh, because the That's cough good. hasn't been that bad, but I've talked more yeah. than I have in some time. Uh, you didn't hear me have a, a quick hit of albuterol, for example. You I didn't, didn't hear that. No. There was one cough early on, and I almost made a made a joke about you not using that mute button, but then I let it go. Couldn't get, so, and couldn't get I didn't there. hear it this again my, for that, so good it's job. It's my problem. I've saved myself tens of minutes of editing. And I figured you'd edit it out, so I was like, well, there's no point in making the joke. It's going to get no, it out anyway. Fuck it up.
<laughs> oh, good job. This was fun. I'm, I'm looking for. I look forward to this. I, was I look forward to reading the books. I look forward to talking to you. I look forward to you know talking to you all out there in the podcast world. And so I'm excited to be back. I was I was excited to share the fact that I had really enjoyed so many comics in the meantime because. I have a bit of a reputation, I believe. Well, in the past, you usually you're like, no, nah, we're on break. I'm not reading anything. And I'm always, always like, you're going to screw yourself. And you didn't. Yeah. And you had fun. I think I read half of my books because of the whole Kindle issue. But mm -hmm. um, I'm making my peace with it. And I'm going to catch up. And, uh, you know. I'm I, working I, I out a system. It's slow. But I'm working it out. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll be back next week. Until then, I'm Connor. I'm Josh. Take Don't touch anyone. Keep the mask on. <laughs> Just seriously. It's so... It, uh, and if you do, stay away from Josh and anyone in his family. Don't... Next year, starting in late October, we're just putting a bubble over the house. <laughs> I'm not doing this. Happened last year. Last year, I had like two months off before my job, and we were all sick then, too. And this was work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to talking about it. <laughs>